Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is indeed your brother, Big VJ, checking in. Hoping everybody is having a powerful day. You know, um, the holiday is approaching. The kids, the children, the teenagers, the spouses, the family, and the friends and some co-workers are waiting for those gifts, right? So we are hoping, beloved, everybody have a powerful holiday, a powerful end of the year as we, Lord willing, are going into the new year. And we at Real Black Consciousness Forum Podcast is wishing that everybody have a powerful new year, right? Because we have to be stronger about life, family, careers, exercise. We got to be strong about it all, right? Even myself, right? Even myself, you know, I've been going through a challenge and... Over the last 60 days, right, I want to say, you know, we begin this challenge with doing 100 burpees every day for 30 days, right? And we know hate is a strong word, beloved. I mean, it's just, it's a strong word, but, oh man, if there's any exercise that I hate doing, I hate doing burpees, man. I feel like I can get on that, I can bench press all day long, you know what I mean? Because I have a goal. I want to get my biceps to 19 inches so I can curl and shit, man. I can goddamn get on that weight bench and go all day, brother. But when it comes to them burpees, <laughs> I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> but I have to because I want my stomach, man, to look a certain kind of way, right? So I just have no choice. In any event, though, we start off with... 100 burpees a day and for this month we're just doing 50 burpees a day and um i was going to end it but lord willing we may carry and stay on this journey all the way into the new year right because it's uh even though you don't like it even though you hate it it's, it's actually good for you right uh we got an article up essentially sports and we're going to talk about our brother, world champion, Javante Tank Davis, right, from the DMV. And we want to give a shout out to everybody that support the podcast. That's in the DMs and the comments, man, and like and share and all that good stuff, man. We appreciate everybody that supports the podcast, right? Uh, a special shout out to our brother, T. Fowler, because he sent us another one. He sent us this, you know what I mean? Uh, I want to say, what, it was just yesterday, beloved, we was on the idiot box, and we was watching our brother, man, young brother, nephew, we was watching Javante, he was, uh, Tank was doing his thing with the, getting the key to the city, it looked like, and he was around some, you know, some city officials, I don't know if it was the mayor, I just seeing that he bought the block, right, I'm like, oh man, that is a double salute, that our brother in entertainment, through the vehicle of boxing, took his money and invested in the community that he came from, right? Man, that wasn't even 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? Damn sure it wasn't 36 hours because it was just in that, right around that 24 hour window of some change. It was like in the last 36 hours. T. Fowler dropped the DM on us and we're looking and we're like, bro, <laughs> it just can't be so. Bro, this can't be so. And when we pulled up the article, it was official. Unfortunately, it was uh, it was official. We see that the devil is busy. The headline reads: Hours after Javante Davis buys buildings in Baltimore for renovation, his coach Calvin Ford announces tragedy. Apartments set for rehabilitation catches fire beloved and in our estimate just in our estimate we feel as though the devil is behind this a hundred percent he's behind it the invisible empire they're behind it i don't give a damn if they catch pookie and ray reagan knuck them coming out 
with some bootleg arts and shit. We are submitting to you that somebody paid them little niggas. And the people that paid them is the devil. Because, see, those crackers don't give you no money as an entertainer to go back and build your block up. That's not where they gave you the money. You supposed to took your black ass to the jewelry store and to the dealership and bought some goddamn 50 Lamborghinis and did like Rick Ross did and bought a plane and shit and bought a million dollar watch and yeah they you got that plane nigga you ain't finna take that you ain't finna transport no food from one place to a, another to help original people they gave you this shit to show off in front of your people they ain't give you no money to help your people for real that's you so I feel like Javante he didn't know the rules he went against the rules of being an entertainer with money he supposed to went down to the jewelry store and bought 50 chains and came out and it looked like Mr. T and everything would have been fine. But since you didn't do that and you invested in your community, coincidentally, the same place where the devil is trying to run you out. See, they don't want no niggas in the city. They, they running niggas out of the city. Sometimes the slow way, sometimes the fast way, right? They're doing it the fast way in Chicago. They're flooding the city in with our brown brothers and sisters. But since the devil is still in charge, he's not going to do nothing but pit us against our own brothers. They're doing it the fast way, though, in Chicago. They did it the slow way in California. They passed the Milford Act in California. That's how they got niggas out of there. They passed the Milford Act. Because in 1967, they acted like they were scared of the Panthers. And they had our brothers, you know, walking around with these shotguns. And then they went behind closed doors, the devil. And them crackers passed a law that you couldn't, it was, a, you couldn't walk around no more with loaded firearms. They disarmed them out there, our people first. Then they ran all the Mexicans in there to run the niggas out. And that's just how the, it's the same hustle. But that was a slow way. That took too long. Chicago, they just doing it a little faster. New York, they just busting them in. They just doing it a little faster. Baltimore, you in the way. They don't need you buying the block, little homie, little nephew. They need you leaving the block. They need you to do like Jada Pickett did. Because she's from Baltimore. They need you to do like Tupac Shakur did. And Montel Williams did, little nephew. And how Martin Lawrence did, little nephew. Go get you a big ass house and go sit down somewhere and you chill. Because you're violating the devil's law and rule when you invest in the in the village. It's unfortunate, but it's real. Let's see what we got. A few hours ago, Javante Davis, longtime trainer, Calvin Ford, Coach Ford, beloved, shared a clip through his Instagram account. It showed a few fire engines and a group of firefighters. They were in front of an apartment block that appeared to have caught fire some time ago. However, some smoke still bellowed from the windows. A few firefighters appeared on the terrace. Thus, it looked like they had brought the blaze under control. Shout out to the firefighters. Right? Shout out to all the firehouses around the country. We appreciate you guys' service. You work all day around the clock. We are thankful. We appreciate it. Shout out to the EMT services around the country. We appreciate you guys as well. And the law. We appreciate these police officers. We ain't going to be no cop. Right? Because unfortunately, uh, we had one of our greatest brothers who's an artist. His name is Ice Cube. And he wrote a record. said, fuck the police. Because the small hat was behind him causing division. And what that did, it, it put a wedge between black males and black male officers. Because when he made fuck the police, he should have stood on the square, being all wise, right and exact, and said fuck the white police. Is what the song should have been. But it wasn't. Because the devil was in he's in control and he, he ain't gonna let you say that. So you said fuck all police. And when we heard it in Cleveland and in Milwaukee and in Chicago and Detroit, we embraced it, even though our police departments was all black. 
It's nobody but original people in our police department. We just took it along and see that kind of put a wedge between us and them. Nevertheless, we appreciate their service because we're not going to do that job. But if you stay out all day and all night, 24 hours a day, working for the public, we appreciate you guys. All right, let's just say this. Again, I suspect that the devil is behind it all. They may catch Pookie and them next week. I don't see it. Tonight, Baltimore police are investigating after more flyers encouraging white residents to join the KKK are found in South Baltimore's Riverside community. According to our media partner, the Baltimore Sun, the flyers lined sidewalks in the 1500 block of Belt Street and were found on other nearby streets this morning. It is at least the second time this month KKK propaganda has been distributed in the South Baltimore neighborhood. What I do see coming is they're going to get a couple of small hats and they're going to have some writers on their team. And through the small media channels, they're going to start pumping fraud. Because that's what they do when niggas got money. When niggas got some money, they're going to start saying, hey, man, you know, some burn down. I mean, that shit look like fraud. Now, we all know that our brother Javante Davis just made $30 million on his last fight. I mean, every time the man fight, he sell out all the arenas and all kind of shit. He sell it out. So he's he's papered up, right? We ain't pocket watching, but we are pocket watching. But they want to put some fraud on the brother. And then they may pull out a couple, you know, June bug and nuck nuck them and say, oh, look, they the ones that did it. And, but our people don't really don't get into that. We get into some gunplay kind of shit because we get high on emotions and, you know, you jealousy you get get high but we don't really get into the bombing blowing up i mean just think how many of our people you really think got a uh Antarctic cookbook in their crib how many i mean shit i got one but i mean how many other brothers you think got an Antarctic cookbook that's something we should have i mean i wouldn't download that shit because it's probably free these days because back in the day you know Everybody, it was kind of like a thing to have that kind of shit. Just, just in case for some wartime, racial war kind of shit, you had to know how to put something together. And that was the book to teach you how to put it together. But you know these peanut, these peanut head guys, they don't know nothing about no shit like that. Now, if you did want to download it, I probably wouldn't download it from my house. So, yo, you know, not from your crib. I'd probably go to the library, put the shit on the travel drive or something. Because <laughs> you download that shit from your crib. The FBI, you'd be on the FBI list. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, VJ says it's a podcast. It was VJ that told me about this book. I, I, I said, ain't know about this book. <laughs> See, everybody from the 90s know about that. <laughs> they ain't going for that. Well, everybody from the 90s got an anarchist cookbook. Everybody wanted to be militant and revolutionary. Everybody got one. <laughs> Beloved, maybe that's a different story for a different day. How many people play on a uh, professional football team? 53, right? They got the Baltimore Ravens. All right, so if we did the quick math on our feet and just did a guesstimate, we would say 53 players equals 53 millionaires. Let me just, just throw it out there like that. How much property do them niggas own, you think, for the Ravens in that city? See, if we kind of play the numbers game, there's enough money come through professional sports teams and players that, man, the whole city can be renovated overnight. But that's not so. That's not the plan to do that, man. You can't do no shit like that. The devil got a plan to get the niggas out the city. Not bring them into the city, get them out the city. And they're doing it through the bus program these days. They're expecting it to be more violence than it is between us as original people and our brown brothers, which is also original people, but it's not. It's a little violent in L.A. It could be worse, but we'll take what we can get. It's violent in Chicago. It could be worse. Man, we take what we can get. 
it could be violent in the, pen in the penitentiary level, pardon me, in New York City, because they play that black and brown game when you get into the pen. But when you're in Jersey, New York City, it's not really like that in the free world. It could be worse, though, but it's cool where it's at. We take what we can get. Ultimately, though, we see that the enemy is trying to replace us out of all people. Why us? Why you? Why I? Why is it out the question to support and build your community and everybody else can? Let's finish up last paragraph. But when he, what, what many fans and followers may find disturbing could be the details regarding the place where the incident occurred. It is the place that coaches Ford's famous charge Javante Davis bought yesterday for renovation. The lightweight world champion as a part of the community outreach through his GTD development took over the charge of around nine properties in the neighborhood in Baltimore where he grew up. Javante Davis wanted to give back to the community. Double salute nephew. We see that your heart is there. We see that you love your people. And you want to employ your people. But your property has become a victim of white capping. Do you know what that means? White capping? Back in the early 1900s, they just say night riding. You know what night riding is? It's when the devil, through the invisible empire, because that's what the Ku Klux Klan means, right? That's what the KKK means, Invisible Empire. And the Invisible Empire used to do something they call night riding, meaning they would wait to the night, sun go down, because in the South, there was a term called sundown towns. Ask your grandparents and your great aunties that's still here, pull from them that great wealth of information that they have because they can tell you who the devil really is you see a different kind of devil because you're all on tv and you know what i'm saying you're hanging at school dance with him and all that he let you come into the walmart and the retail stores and spend money but our people know the real beast and mom and them got some secrets in that south man they tell you nah don't we they know the real cracker they know the devil when they see it in any event they have something called sundown towns. And what that means is when the sun go down, no niggas should be around. If you own property, night riding is when they came through and tore your shit down at night. They tore your property down. They tore your business down. They tore your house down. I got a quick question for my brothers and sisters that live in the DMV area. There are 13 hate groups that reside in Maryland as their home base. What do they do every day? What's their day-to-day -day operation? You tell me. I don't know. I'm from Detroit. You tell me what they got going on down there. Let me take a guess. You don't know. You know when Beyonce is coming to town. I know you know that. You know the Ravens schedule. You know that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know I mean, you like the you know you got the wizard schedule, you know that. All right, well you got thirteen hay groups. That's in the state of Maryland. What do you think they do every day? They play tonk. They play spades, pinochle. They go golfing all day. They in a hay group. They getting their golfing game together. You know they stay playing handball. They in the gym throwing the handball. That's what the hay groups do in Maryland. It's a handball game. <laughs> but what are these crackers doing, man? What, tell me what, what they doing. When the mix get together, you ain't around. When the guineas get together, you're not around. What, what they down there doing? These 13 hate groups, what they doing? If you don't live in Maryland, in whatever state that you belong to, well, my question to you is, if a hate group is there and we live in America, and the hells of North America, in the territory that we call the United States, Right? It's not called Turtle Island anymore. It's called the United States. 
The hate groups in your state, what do they do every day? They go to the bar, hang out, just talk old tales. And what do you think they're doing? What was Brandon Russell doing? And his female counterpart, Sarah Clendaniel, what were they doing? When they got caught with all that bomb making material down there, what they got, what they were just gonna do what? <laughs> what these folk doing? You're gonna learn quick, beloved. Them folk ain't like you. See, you got a heart of freedom, justice, and equality, and they don't. Do you know who Brandon Russell is? How many of you know who Brandon Russell is? Sarah Clendaniel is. How many of you know? Let me tell you a story, right? We're going to talk about a story in the Deep South because there's so many of them, man. You know, there's... Oh, man. There's a Rosewood story. There's a Women's in Delaware story. There's a... God damn it. There's a Black Wall Street story. And there's a Macon, Georgia story. And there's an Alabama Birmingham bombing story. We got some stories, brother, when it comes to our legacy, right? Underneath the devil's rulership. It's an Oki massacre, or Okoi, as they would say. It's really Oki, but they say Okoi. It's a massacre that happened in Florida, right? And. It's when the devils jumped on our people for trying to vote. Nothing more, beloved, nothing less. Black citizens just voting. Right? So they say that, well, voting don't really mean nothing. Well, they jumping on folks and killing folks, it means something. So it's about what's on the ballot. Right? At this particular time, the population was like 50-50 with original men and women with the devils. But see, the problem was since the 19th century, our people owned all that land. Down there in Florida. This happened in Florida. Our people all they owned all that land and shit. Being that they own the farmland, right? Farmland brings you wealth and security because you could employ your people when you own the farm. Let me pivot and say something. See, this is why Elijah, right? Elijah had a map. He was building a nation. And on this map, farming was at the top. He had the mosque, right? The temple, right? Muhammad's temple. The next to Muhammad's temple on the map, he had farming. And from farming, he built the retails. And you can see the other line of businesses that Mr. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's no longer here, that he went in. So he could employ his people. And he did. 1975, the nation was about worth like $75 million and had 11,000 employees. That's almost, you can't even fathom no shit like that these days. 11,000 employees. Maybe that's a different story for that. Our people had this land, though, and uh, the devils killed them and ran them out. Right? Devil supremacy is the biggest welfare package in the planet, in the globe, on the top side of the good Lord's green earth. They call it white supremacy, we say devil supremacy. It's the biggest welfare package ever because it's a get down or lay down business template. They ain't just smarting their way to the top or using intelligence to get to the top or being square dealing and honest to get to the top they use violence to get to the top and when they get to the top they use technology to keep them there the okoi right as they would say okay but it's really the okoi they say okoi we go with that they didn't want to see our people do something as simple as own the farm to provide wealth and security for their own people now, they didn't care about the money, though. But you had money, and then you had business. And you will learn soon enough, see, them crackers don't want you to have both. You're going to have one or the other. Now, this is how they thought way back 
in the early 1900s. How do you think they think now? You think anything have changed? Brother, they don't change. You will learn soon enough, you can have that money. Because money is going to put you on a high end. And once you get on a high end level, all that shit you got to buy, you got to get it back from them. Ain't no Rolls Royce dealerships in the hood. Ain't no Lamborghini dealerships in the hood. You got to go somewhere to get that shit. All that fancy stuff that the fancy clothes and all that ain't on the block. It's off the block. So they give you that money, they're going to get it right back. But that company, man, that company do something different. Boy, that company generates money. Right? It keeps generating, generating, generating. And they can't have that because they need our people poor. Just because. Nothing fancy, just because. So, in my estimate, beloved, I suspect that this just ain't nothing but the devil's work, man. If they catch Peanut tomorrow and say he did it, I ain't gonna believe it, but I know what you know what's gonna come out? Fraud gonna come out. Remember your brother VJ told you this now? They're gonna start dropping story about this fraud. They own the media. And then here's a, here's one better for you. You know how long it takes to close on these kind of properties and shit like that? Cause it looked like it's an overnight thing. But when you kind of deal with real estate, boy, that shit is a process, man. That should take a minute, right? Think about what's been going on with Javante Tank Davis, his life. Just think about the last couple of years. He going to jail for shit he wouldn't even went to jail for. He dealing with a judge right now. The man is stuck in the state. He can't even go home and see his kids or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? He can't have no real training camp. All of a sudden, like, damn, dog, all of a sudden? All of a sudden, now, this is, <laughs> they fucking, with, now, many of us with knowledge itself, we know what the devil is doing, right? We know we know how this been to work. We're like, okay, you trying to do this? Now, watch how this turn on you now. All of a sudden, this shit, and they're going to start networking against you. That's the nature of a parasite. That's the nature of the spider. It's the web that give the spider the strength. It's not the spider. It's not the spider. The spider don't have no strength. Legs are too fragile, just too weak. But you know what make the spider the spider? It's the web that they put you in. It's the web that gets you. Now we just have to arm my brother with the knowledge itself. So he won't get stuck in the devil's web. Because we can assure you, beloved, he's their target. Peace and black power to you, family. We're going to keep our eye on this thing. We thank you guys so much for listening. We thank you guys for hanging out. This is indeed... Real Black Content is for a podcast. It's your brother V. Happy holidays to all. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Baltimore boxer Javante Davis has several titles to his name. Now he's donning a new role in the city. Developer. This block here of Sandtown Winchester is where Davis grew up. Now it's largely abandoned and filled with vacant homes. Davis recently bought up two buildings on Woodier Street. He hopes to be an example for others living in the neighborhood. I feel as though we put more, more, um, I don't want to say money, but more stuff in the city that the kids and, and, and uh, people can do in the city. I feel as though the city will be better for, you know, everybody. Everybody on this block, you know, um, that once lived when I was here, definitely uh, a memory. For sure, I will always, you know, have a uh, memory of them in my, uh, behind my, you know, in my mind. All right, here we go. One, two, three. All right, now Davis's team is rehabbing two homes. Eventually, the plan is to acquire an entire block, rehab the homes, and convert them to affordable housing. Thanks for listening. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Anchor, Spotify, and Facebook. Also. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on the podcast. 
your opinion of what you just heard is important to the platform. So yes, beloved, your comments are the engine and fuel to the machine. Stay blessed and have a powerful day.